elections next week. But today, South Africans living abroad uh, continue to vote today ahead of the elections. Expats in New Zealand got the ball rolling when they began voting after nine last night. That, of course, being South African time. Well, in studio with us now is IEC chairperson Pansy Tlakula to uh, discuss all matters pertaining to the elections at this particular stage. So good to have you. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much and good morning, Leanne, to you and your viewers. Right. So we've got, we've got uh, all expats around the world going to the polls today. Are we ready? Is this something that's uh, going to go smoothly for us? Yeah, actually, if you look at places like uh, New Zealand, uh, uh, the voting stations will close, you know, in one or two hours' time. Yeah. Because of the time difference. So everything is on course, but also to remind uh, the other experts who will start voting this morning that uh, they need to bring with them their South African ID uh, or smart card, if they have one, and a valid passport. It's important also to bring a valid passport because those are the requirements. Okay, so that's what's happening. Uh, the polling stations obviously opening or open the whole day around the country. There was, there was a bit of concern that there, there was miscommunication and some may not find their names on the voters' roll. Was that all ironed out? Is everything okay now? Everything was ironed out uh, because you know that we conducted a voter registration uh, in our missions and thereafter those who have... Uh, successfully been registered are the ones who had to apply mm. uh, for a special vote. Uh, and before we granted that special vote, we had to check whether people were on the voters' roll or not. Okay. So as all systems go, uh, all the missions uh, will be voting today. Finland, I think, will vote until 1 p.m. today because uh, they're having some event after one o'clock. But we have communicated that as Good. well. Good, and, and we see that London has the most registered voters. Yes, almost 10,000. Wow, it's, okay, it's, that's fantastic, yeah. that's good to hear. I just want to ask you as well, you know, there's so many of these silly emails doing the rounds. I mean, I got one in my inbox uh, uh, the, the other day, something about disappearing ink and be careful about this and um, also sign your ballot paper after you have voted on both sides. I mean, they're the most bizarre stories going around at the moment. <laughs> um, this is nonsense, clearly. No, 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 no. The only mark that is allowed, two marks are allowed on the ballot paper. In front, you know, where the names of the political parties appear, the voter has to mark, yeah. you know, which political party he or she votes for. And our officials have to then stamp the ballot paper at the back. Yes. Because uh, an unstamped ballot paper doesn't count. Um, so that's what it is. So these stories, I, I think, are urban legends. Okay. I think so, too, if yeah. I have to look at those things. All right. Pansy, let's talk, let's talk about other issues now. And let's, let's move on to... I think what's happening outside of elections that's taking a lot of your time as well in terms of this, uh, the, the five parties arguing uh, against you being the head of these elections and the IEC at this point in time. Uh, just remind us what happened yesterday. Yesterday the application was heard uh, by the court and eventually after arguments on both sides because you know our view um, was that uh, the matter was not urgent. Uh, that uh, there has to be a full investigation into this matter by the court. Mm. And that investigation, in our view, will entail that uh, evidence that is presented must be tested, witnesses must be called. So as far as we are concerned, it has to be an investigation that has to start afresh because the two reports that we have were not compiled uh, by uh, judicial officers. So that, that's, uh, that's our case, that we expect the court to conduct a full investigation. The court then said that it will do that, uh, but it will do that uh, on Friday. Okay. Whether the magnitude of this uh, investigation, whether it can be completed in, in, in a day, uh, it's, it's something that uh, has to be seen when it happens. It, it, it is a bit worrying when you look at the investigations that have been done into Firstly, Tudi Madonsela, our public protector, finding that maladministration and possible corruption in the, in the office park was found. Then the national forensic investigator found that it wasn't fair, it wasn't transparent, and it certainly wasn't cost effective. So you've got two major bodies, and of course the public protector is an arm of the government, finding that there was irregularities. So th there certainly is something, and it, and it does put a bit of a shadow over the elections, and, and your credibility is what they're arguing as well. 
your response, your personal response to this? You know, the, the report of the public protector, after it came out, I then took it on review because I do not agree with uh, some of his findings. So the review proceedings are still on course. The PwC, I've not responded to it at all. I did not participate in the PwC process because uh, I was advised by my lawyers that I cannot participate since the PwC report was based on a report that I am challenging. Mm. So it will be the first time that uh, I will have an opportunity to respond to, to PwC. Um, but those processes, let those processes take their course. The IEC is an organization that has a foolproof uh, systems for elections. Election preparation has been going on unhindered. And uh, the systems and the processes that uh, we have in place will stand that organization in good stead for it to be able to produce a free and fair uh, uh, election. It cannot be that because there is one person out of so many people mm. in that organization that the credibility of the organization will be affected. Uh, I'm not sure how that will be the case because as I've indicated, uh, there is a way in which uh, the, the organization functions in terms of the law yeah. and in terms of the processes that we've put in place. I think, I think what, what, what is of concern is that you are the head of this organization. And I think what's even more concerning is that you've been quoted as saying that if you are removed from this position, you don't think that somebody else could actually step in right now and do your job, which just says that, that you do play a vital and key role in these elections. And then it leads me to the point of, of, of these, this multi-party forum saying that if you are still in charge, they are going to fight to declare these elections null and void. Well, um, you know, I'm sure I've been misquoted uh, where you say that you said I cannot. I was simply saying that the scheme of the act is such that the commission consists of an odd number of people mm. so that when decisions are taken, where in the event, uh, you know, because the, the, the law says that decisions are taken by majority. So if you have an even number of persons on the commission, you may end up with a tie when decisions are taken, if there has to be a vote and there is no deadlock mechanism, a uh, breaking mechanism in the act. That's all that I was saying. Okay. I was not saying that I'm indispensable. There is no person who is indispensable. Yeah. Uh, your <laughs> second question is that I think as law-abiding citizens, who uh, respect uh, the rule of law, there are processes for challenging the elections. If people are not satisfied with the outcome of an election, whether Pensitakula is there or not there, there is a process of lodging an objection, and that objection has to be material to the result of an election, and the objection has to be adjudicated upon by the commission. And if a party is not satisfied with the decision of the commission, on uh, that objection can take the objection to the electoral court. Do you not think it would be a good idea having all of this and the integrity of our elections at stake for you to perhaps just step aside for these elections, let somebody else take your role, let the courts decide, let the process happen and I mean, because handling the elections is big enough, never mind having to deal with your integrity, the integrity of the IEC and a massive case like this. Do you not think it's a better idea to just almost take a leave of absence for these elections? I haven't reached that point yet. I've stayed the course. If that time comes, I will tell South Africans, but I'm not here yet. I'm not, not there, yet. there yet. All right. For you, you feel you're the best person for the job and, and, and that you want to see these elections through. I want to through. see these elections through. And yeah. then thereafter, I can deal with this matter. Okay. So Friday morning is when this all happens. You've got to get the affidavit ready, handed in tomorrow, and Friday morning the inquiry begins. Yes, but I have to also tell you that today we are launching the results operations center at 2 o'clock. I think it's important for South Africans to know that we are ready. And as you know, we'll be operating from that center, I think, from next week. Yeah. So there will be a big event today at 2 o'clock. Uh, which is the launch of the National Results Operations Centre okay. to just give South Africans uh, the confidence that we are ready and it's all systems go for elections 2014. All right.
you moved the conversation so well <laughs> that I might as well stick to your side of the conversation now as well. Uh, it, it, it was a bit worrying yesterday when we saw that the president actually had to cancel one of his planned trips to the northwest um, due to potential violence that's happening there. Uh, the president couldn't. We also know one of the ministers also, Fakir Mbalula, was made to leave that area. Are you concerned about this, this election showing some violent and volatile areas? A few areas, of course, we are concerned, and you'd know that even at the time when we were conducting uh, voter registration, there were a few areas uh, which were problematic, like uh, Sterk Spreit and uh, Mata, um, um, Malamulele. But we are v working very closely with the law enforcement uh, agencies, and they have assured us uh, that uh, they will secure uh, the elections and they will secure the voting stations where there are difficulties to ensure that each and every South African in every part of this country will be afforded the opportunity to cast their vote. Have more security personnel been deployed this year than in previous years? Well, I think it's strategic deployment in the sense that, uh, you know, we normally have two uh, uh, police officers in each voting station and that is in voting stations where there are no problems, but in areas that are volatile or hotspots, as they are called, there will be more police officials, officers. Right. Pansy Tukula, thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Pansy is, of course, the chair of the IEC. As you heard, big day today. The results center is going to be uh, unveiled and uh, show the readiness of everything. And that's where Morning Live will be broadcasting from, from Monday next week. And then, of course, our 24-hour channel will then continue to come from there, bringing you all of the election news as and when it happens. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Thank you very let's, much. Uh, let's take a break here. When we return, we've got some sports news with Faye.